Hello, everyone. My name is Edith, also known as Lady E, and welcome to the Lady E Effect podcast. If this is your first time tuning in, we interview purpose-driven professionals that are doing amazing contributions worldwide through the media lens of personal development and business optimization. If that is something that sounds interesting to you, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and connect with us on all of our audio podcast platforms such as Apple, Spotify, Amazon, and the additional ones will be in our description box. So for those that know me, I love to get right into it. You know, we always interview the best of the best that are doing so many great things for people, businesses, and communities in various industries and sectors around the world. So of course, today is nothing different for it. So without taking any more time, thank you so much for joining us. Please introduce yourself and let us know what you would like us to know. Absolutely. Hey, everybody. How you doing? My name is Remy Jules, based out of Austin, Texas. I am the founder and the owner of Elex Solutions Consulting. Uh, what we specialize in specifically is what we call PB. S uh, or PBH, which is program-based housing, uh, program-based supportive services. Uh, specifically, what we like to do is we like to have properties with a purpose, uh, real estate with a given purpose of, or I would like to, what I like to call it, uh, purpose-driven real estate. Um, and the whole purpose is how can we obtain wealth or invest into real estate, uh, but at the, at the same time, giving back to our communities and supporting those that actually need housing. So we like to provide alternative housing, transitional housing, as well as uh, emergency placement services. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> that's amazing. And thank you so much for joining us. We cool. are excited to get right into it today. So my first question yeah. to you is, what led you to the space that you're in, in terms of operating, definitely sounds like kingdom driven work in the space and industry of real estate? Absolutely. So particularly on my end, um, what started with me uh, specifically was because first and foremost, I'm a father and I'm a husband, right? So as a father and as a husband, you begin to start thinking differently, right? It's not just about the, the normal day hustled and bustled, the, the nine to five. You start thinking about, okay, how can I ensure traditional wealth for my family? What can I do to put myself and my family in a better position? And so Immediately, I started looking into, okay, what are some ways that I can get into real estate? And so I started looking into real estate, and then I was looking into what are some very creative ways to secure my investments. And believe it or not, I got into government contracting first. Well, when I say government contracting, it's basically, you know, basically doing uh, business with the government, and that can range from products and services to actually subcontracting with prime uh, contractors that actually get these big contract opportunities to fulfill work and duties and services throughout the community. Well, when I found out that there was um, um, contract of opportunities available through housing, I said, oh, shoot, tapped into something right there, right? So basically, make a long story short, the government will actually pay you to house those in need. And when I found that out, I said, okay, great. So that's how we started looking into government contracts specifically related to programs. And, when, and, when, and what a lot of times when people think of programs, they immediately think of like Section 8. They think of some type of subsidy housing, some type of uh, supportive housing. And that is correct to a degree. Um, the only difference is specifically, we don't necessarily, necessarily just cater to families. We actually cater to individuals. And what that looks like is that's veterans, right? Um, that's actually the homeless population. That's actually, um, you know, those that are transitioning out of prison. So for our former felons that are actually looking to get acclimated back into society. And then we also support a mental health component. And for those that are recovering from drug and alcohol abuse and sex trafficking, a lot of the times these individuals um, tend to kind of already have all the odds stacked against them, right? So they got to get their credit together. They have to have some type of financing. But guess what the key component to that is? They need uh, address. And a lot of the time that hinders them because they're either in the shelter, they're living in their cars, they're living on the streets. So I was just like, what could I do to be a support to them? 
Well, believe it or not, a lot of these individuals have case managers and case workers. And so they are working with specific agencies that are grant funded, that are grant supported uh, through government funding. And they're actually able to pay them or pay me as a, as a real estate investor, as a property owner to utilize my, my properties for the purposes of their sustainability, for their betterment. Mm -hmm. And that way you can go and obtain wealth by not compromising your integrity. Because, you know, a lot of times, a lot of people feel like, man, you know, what did that person do to get rich? What did that person do to get financially stable? And there's always some back mind or condition of man did they compromise the integrity who did they had to uh you know who did they have to knock down to get ahead right or who, who did they had to um actually and i hate to say this but it's true you know who did they have you know what kind of what kind of agreements was going on there right and so in this particular case this was a divine situation where i can give back to the community i could serve the populations that i want to service and there's no discrimination at all because at the end of the day, everybody deserves a second chance. That's why I call it programs of based housing or second chance housing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is a very powerful testimony for sure. And I love the fact that as you highlighted, you know, as a man, um, yes. men are created to be leaders. Yes, women, we have our roles, but God created man to be the head. So as yes, a husband, yeah. as a father, um, as you highlighted, you know, a, a typical nine to five or something that limits obviously the major responsibilities that you're held yes. as a man is important to take a step back and, you know, put it before the Lord and really analyze like, you know what? this is not going to work, right? This is not going to work. This for sure, I'm aware this is not going to work. So how am I able to pertain wealth? Because the Bible talks about this, right? I believe right. in um, a lot of different areas, but one that comes to mind is Deuteronomy 8, 18, thou shall remember the Lord of thy God, for it is he that give thee power to gain wealth, yes. right? Yes. So that's the thing that he's blessed us, men and women, to do, but men being specifically and primarily the heads of the household, leading mm -hmm generation and and providing for your household and just being of service to provide for other households that leads me to my next question um being a husband and being a father and overall being a man what would your advice in that space of kingdom work being of service and um learning day by day understanding who your role as a man is not just in society, not just in the world, but in the frame of how God made a Adam, right? Because God, right. Adam and Eve, right? We're still Adam, right. and still represent that. So my question for you is, what is your advice to men, whether they be husbands and or fathers, but men in general, especially for those that have experienced any of the challenges or hardships that you be of service to in your space and field? Absolutely. Um, I would say to all my men, to all my leaders, and even to, to the women that are head of the households, you know what I mean? You know, cause there are a lot of single mothers out there. Don't be afraid to step out on faith. Um, mm -hmm. And what that, and what I mean by that is if you have an unction in your spirit, if, if there's something that God has put in your heart, particularly regarding business, learning a new skill, learning a new trade, going back to school, whatever that looks like, you just does one act of obedience can change your life, mm. right? Mm. It may not always be um, the most ideal environment. It may not be the most ideal situation. You're like, Lord, how am I going to go back to school with no money? Or how am I going to start this new job or this new career path with no money? Money. But a lot of the times, you know, let's just go back. To, let's go back to the word, right? Like you mentioned scripture. Let's go back to Proverbs three and six. And you just say, Lord, you know, you know, the Bible says, you know, acknowledge, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he will direct your path. Right. So and that's and that's really what it's about. It's really saying, OK, God, at the end of the day, I'm going to take the pressure off of me and I'm going to leave it up to you to guide my steps. Mm -hmm. If you order my mm -hmm. steps, obviously, God is going to one thing about one thing about the one, one thing about God. Right. Is that he, he don't want his reputation. He don't want his name looking bad. So he's willing to take the responsibility to make you succeed and make you successful. That's what the that's what the Bible says, Jeremiah 29, 11, right? To where he knows the plans for us, right? So we just have to be the ones that are willing and obedient. And we have to be comfortable with the journey. And I had to learn that, like, you know, 
the journey may not always be what we want to look like, right? We have to understand what lessons are we need, needing to learn along the way. And I just want to encourage everybody just to take the first step. The, the first step is literally the hardest because you're going through all the mental obstacles and the, the mental traction in your mind of like, man, you know, what if I leave my family this way? What if I leave my family that way? But at the end of the day, when you dedicate your steps back to God, I promise you, you won't fail. You won't fail. And you're going to learn along the way and allow him to. And, and honestly, when you start, re, when you start making, uh, gaining the momentum that you desire, let that, <clears throat> let that encourage you to stay in prayer. So you'll know what directions to go in, because just like God has a plan for you, so does the enemy. So there's a lot of the times the enemy can come in like an angel of light. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it can seem like a, a God opportunity, but you just want I mean, or a good opportunity. But you want to make sure that it's a God opportunity. Amen. Right, You want to make sure that it's divine specifically from God, because a lot of the times when it's from God, there's so much peace about it. When it doesn't come from God, I promise you, there's some there's a there's a sense of like uh, there's, you don't have peace. You, you, you there's a there's a strong hesitancy or something. Right. So in, in, in any form of leadership, whether it be a new venture, new opportunities, learning something to learning new skills, take that step. For, take that first step. Don't be afraid to take the first step for sure. Amen. That is a powerful answer. And I love the fact that you acknowledge, although men are the head of households, there are a lot of women that end up being the heads of households for whatever purpose, you know, it may not be a forever thing, but shout out to all the amazing mothers that are out there, whether they're single mothers, or even if they have a particular relationship with their children and the fathers of their children, in whatever way that looks like there are women that tend to be the heads of the households that they're in. So I love the fact that, you know, you focus on honestly, the whole purpose of why we were created in the first place. You know, the whole Bible is about understanding your covenant with God, right? Because you as a husband, um, a father, you know, there's a covenant that takes place in marriage. And when you think about marriage, you know, the husband and the wife have an understanding that we're coming in agreement and we're making a covenant. This is me and you, nobody else. So when we understand that relationship with Christ, it changes the trajectory of just all of our senses, the way we see, the way we think, the way right. um, we just operate and just the different trajectories and areas of our lives. And especially as men, I love the fact that even in the profession that you're in, um, even in the spaces of professional spaces that I've been in working with men, women, children, whether it's um, autism or human development or uh, drug abuse, whatever it is, you know, a lot of right. times men, men of color, but just men in general have, be, have been seen as, you know, casted out of the community and society. And it doesn't... Mm seem like they have a purpose and one thing about yes. God, his glory is all about purpose when he made the creations Correct. that he did especially specifically us as mankind when you go outside you don't see dogs walking people you see people walking dogs like there's a authority <laughs> there's, <like> a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a authority yeah. you know direction and commandment that god designed when he designed us right so it's such a beautiful thing that you use your work to, you know, work with and remind men that, you know, especially men that's gone through different areas of the system or even men that go yes. through militaries, you know, men that go through war. Psychologically, that is something that can be tormenting. You know, they can get to the point where they live, you know, a, a prosperous life. But, you know, the enemy, like you said, has his own tactics and his own plan. So if he wants to kind of deviate your mind to go back and maybe reflect on not so pleasant memories, that's something that he may do. So I love the fact that, you know, whether a man was previously a felon coming out of prison, military mm -hmm. abuse um because it can be substance abuse it can be physical abuse it could be sexual abuse whatever it is these men are still the atoms of the world they still have purpose and absolutely very very important that men like yourself you know lay that reminder through your gifts of service and being of service that you know it's not even about being like me. You have your own purpose. So if God can mm -hmm. you, guide you uh, and show you the light, because the word of God is living, right? Our faith basically means applying the word of God to our lives and situations. So 
I love the fact that you use your work to be of service and remind those men that, again, society wants to make them feel like they're forgotten about that they're not and they have purpose. So, right. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. So thank you for highlighting that. Um, I would like to get into my next question for you. Sure, so, sure, please. Um, speaking of um, all of what you did, which is super, super diverse and amazing at the same time, I definitely want to switch a little bit into the space of mental health, right? The, mm, mind, the, yeah. is one of the most, if not the most powerful organ right in terms of our brains you know yeah whether we sleep properly we eat properly we fast work out read whatever it is our minds you know and ultimately like it connects to our soul so it's just like the things that go on in our minds we are responsible for being aware of it we're responsible yes. for responding to it the word of god says he didn't give us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind right so of course we know there's going to be challenges towards it especially when we were designed uh, for greatness and advancement so I would like to get your insight especially as a man a man of color but just in general a man why do you believe that mental health especially in today's world is very important for men and overall people yeah, uh, it's very important because first and foremost, you know, the Bible says that a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that's what's going on. There's a lot of instability. There's a lot of uh, lack of focus. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of distractions. Right. And so um, when you have a sound mind, meaning a clear mind, a, a mind that is focused on the things and on the trajectory that God has put you on the path to pursue, there's a certain there's, there's a reason why like I, I listen to a lot of like um and I, and I and I just started to do this but I started listening to those like podcasts that are very motivational because a lot of the times when this is a new venture you you know you deal with self doubt you know you deal with the imposter syndrome you just deal with the lack of confidence because these are all new ventures like you know this is this this is really beyond your scope and so you're literally leaning on you know, God to, to get you through this process, right? Especially in housing, especially in real estate. When you look at the economy right now, everything is telling you not to invest. Everything is telling you not to purchase. Everything is telling you not to buy. Look at the real estate. Look at uh, the interest rates. Look at how people are leaving these cities. Look at how people are you know, um, you know, because of COVID, right? People are still recovering from COVID. You look at the uh, the 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 greatest economic downturn of uh, people being laid off of their jobs and things of that nature. Like, there's so many different components that are contributing to the factors of what you should not do. So, how do you keep the clear mind, the sound mind, in order for you to stay on the path and the trajectory that God has for you? And that really comes with, like really being in a position where you can look, truly hear and see God and understand what God has for you. And also just stay the path, stay the course. It won't be overnight. And yes, you may face these challenges. And guess what? Maybe God is trying to teach you something through these challenges. What happens through, what happens with us is that in the Western civilization, we want to avoid hardship. We want to avoid pain. We want to avoid those problems. But how else will we learn? How else will we be able to become triumphant over those situations? How, in order, in order to, in order to, to be victorious, you have to be a victim. You have mm. to face some type of issue, mm. problem, right? In order for you to be able to become uh, successful, right? And I, I feel like that's the thing. In order to have a test, you gotta have, you know, in order for you to have a testimony, you gotta have a test, right? So, you know, specifically focusing on mental health here is what does your environment look like? Who are you around? Who's speaking into your life? What are you speaking over your life? Mm. You know what I mean? Your words have power. So are you speaking against the very things that is hindering you? Are you or are you speaking the things that's hindering you? Mm. Right. So that's that's another thing, too, is like I, I give you a prime example. I was um, I listened to my sister. Her name is Dr. Lester Masson. She says words create worlds, especially as a believer. If we have the Holy Spirit in us, don't you know that we have his power? So if we're, we're praying to God and asking God for things to manifest and for things to happen. But don't you know, you could be sabotaging what God is trying to do if you're speaking and you're truly believe you're speaking against those things and you're believing it. Mm. Well, you know, well, God, you know, my credit ain't that good. 
Mm. Did God say anything about your credit? He just told you to believe. And he also told you to pursue. Mm. But if you're so full, and, and, and the reason why I say that is because and I, I can, I'm talking about myself. This is not to call anybody out, but this is just to say, on paper, I'm doing amazing things. But don't you know, there's a lot of people that's been in my space. Don't you know, I, I didn't make a dime for almost four years mm. in this space. Mm. I was in a deficit. I had to. I, I still work. I still have a job. I still have a nine to five, as, as we speak. And so, you know, these are things that we have to do. The realities of it all, and because you, your bills still have to get paid, even though when you're on a mission, you're on this assignment of your life. You just feel like, okay, God, it's going to take me, and and I'm going to be wealthy. Well, how can you maintain your wealth? Don't you know people are losing money? Don't you know people that get wealthy, they tend to lose their money? You know, don't you know most businesses fail within their first year? You know, so I mean, there's so many different components that God has taken me through. I had to develop relationships. I had to learn how to network. I had to learn how to negotiate. You know, all these different components, right? And that's just part of the journey. Just when you embrace the journey and you embrace what God, how God wants to lead you through the process, things will be so much easier for you. And I think where a lot, the, the mental health struggle comes in is because I don't think we are, mentally prepared for the journey it sounds good you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like it think of somebody that has never driven before a child that, that wants to drive mm. are they prepared are they prepared for the traffic are they you know they they've never driven a car they're excited to have a car are they prepared for the traffic are they prepared for the maintenance to the cars are they prepared for the car to break down no right all they could think about is, man, I want to be cool. I want to have a car and I want to drive with my friends and I want to just be that person playing loud music, bumping. But they never think about the work that goes into it. And I think that's what it is. I think that's what it's about. We've been we've been so conditioned in this Instagram, social media mentality that we believe the lies over the actual reality of the situation. Right. We've been conditioned to believe the, the height of it all. That's why they will say, don't let Instagram fool you. Don't let Facebook fool you. Like you can't fall for that. And all these people that just became overnight real estate success, that's a lie, <laughs> you know? So I, I, God had, God truly has the best plans for us all. It may not be what you want it to be. It may not be what it looks like, but I really believe your mental health will come into a, a, a sound place, a clear space when you truly embrace what God has for you the way he has it for you. We can't really tell God how he should move for us. We can ask God to move in a special way for us on behalf of us and try to pursue things, but we can't really tell God to, we can't really dictate to the father how he should guide us and direct us. Because if that's the case, we would know how to move, mm -hmm. right? But there's something that he wants to teach us along the way. And I really believe that's where the mental health component comes in. That's how I've been able to maintain my mental health in this process is because I'm just like, okay, Lord, you know what? I trust you. I trust you. You know what? Let me, let, let me say this. I know I'm going on a tangent, so forgive me, viewers. <laughs> but I'm very passionate about this because, and Lady E knows this, but my mother is in hospice right now. Mm. And I'm just sitting here like, I'm over here helping people off the street. I'm over here helping people get into homes. We're purchasing real estate. But guess what? I'm still dealing with life. Mm. I still have bills. I still have expenses. I still have life. And I think that's where, where also the mental struggle comes in is that I'm also learning how to allow, allow God to be my strength in these times that I am weak. How can I stay focused when I still have life behind me, when I'm still dealing with life? You know what I mean? I mean, my mother had to get her legs amputated. She suffers from kidney failure. She's also a diabetic. I mean, there's just so many components of when you're dealing with, when you're, when you're going through your journey of success, right? You know, the friends you'll the gain along the way, the business that you'll gain along the way, and also the money that you lose and the relationships you lose along the way. Are you prepared for that? Mm -hmm. And when you truly just say, Lord, yes, I surrender, whatever that looks like, it's okay. You can understand it and you can just allow him to lead and guide you. And God will start preparing your heart for it. He'll start telling you, hey, this might, this could happen. This could happen. The Holy Spirit, the Bible calls the Holy Spirit a comforter, mm -hmm. right? There's a reason why he's called the comforter mm -hmm. because you're, he's preparing you for what could possibly happen. And then you could pray on those things for clarity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. God, you're preparing my heart. I already sense it. I already feel it. I already know it. I didn't know that. Like, we don't even know if my mother is going to make it through the summer, but I trust God. And I believe God that she will see. And even if she doesn't glory be to God, she's not suffering anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm prepared for any outcome. And that's how we have to be. That's, that's, that's true mental health. True health is really being in a place to where 
God, I give you the praise and I give you the glory, whatever the outcome may be. Hmm. And I don't think a lot of people are prepared mentally for that to say, okay, if it doesn't go in this direction, I, and I think that's where we struggle because we get so greatly disappointed when things don't happen the way we want them to happen. Let me say this. I'm going to say this, y'all, and I'm going to get back to Lady E's question. I've been doing housing. Did y'all know, y'all, I've been doing housing and I never own my own property. I have my personal property that I own, but the properties that we were housing people through, believe it or not, it came through a sublease, a corporate lease. Yeah. So we were able to house people through corporate leases. And I'm looking like, man, but I want to own. I want to own. But God is teaching me don't be so quick to jump because you might not be in a place to manage your finances uh, if you were responsibility for responsible for two mortgages. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like you see the difference? And guess what? Out of nowhere, as we're gaining momentum, as our business is building, somebody comes with over 30, with a with a over 30 uh unit portfolio. So now guess what? Now we have 30 properties available. I'm going from subleasing, corporate leasing to now working with property managers. Mm. Right. So that means that when there's a will, there's a way the will can still be done. I'm just wondering, oh, my credit ain't together. I don't have the money to put a money, you know, put the money down. I mean, I'm just worried about all these different real components. But God provided somebody that was just like, hey, man, I'm willing to partner. I have these properties and I'm just tired of dealing with traditional tenants. I, I, I want to partner with you in your program. Well, great. Well, guess what? Now you're now you're an affiliated partner. You're a property at your my property acquisition partner. So these are properties that you actually own that we can actually run our program through. That's great. That's that 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 simplifies the purpose. You've already went through the whole acquisition purpose. You already have the properties that you've owned, and now I can run my business free and clear. Um, uh, not when I say free and clear, but without the headache of acquiring a property, having a renovated, keeping up the maintenance, all the usual stuff. Mm -hmm. That part has already been all I got. I get a turnkey ready to go. Mm -hmm. So it's just things like that that we have to be prepared for when we allow God to truly lead us and guide us. To me, that mental and that spiritual health will be provided. Mm -hmm. God would never put us in a position where the, the, the way is not already made. It's not provided. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make any sense because, mm -hmm. you know, he wouldn't put in. He wouldn't give us that unction. God would never set us up to fail is what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. you know, so um I hope that answers your question. I know that was kind of long and drawn out, but I just had to give visual, practical examples of what it looks like to really walk out mental health from a spiritual component. Mm -hmm. And I don't have it all together. Sometimes I need my wife. Sometimes I need to get before the Lord and I can pray. Sometimes I, you know, put so much energy and effort into my work that I neglect my family. Mm -hmm. But when I but when I take that time to push back and say, you know what, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let tomorrow deal with tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and just focus on my family. That's another form of mental health. Mm. It's getting, getting your balance, going back to the person that made you, which is Christ, you mm. know, all that, you know, that rejuvenation factor, but that recharging factor, that's really how you maintain mental health. Mm. That was a wonderful, wonderful story um, and response overall. Thank you so much for sharing that. This is definitely Absolutely. never a space where, you know, we, talk too much you know when we share the goodness of God's glory through our lives that's the whole purpose of testimonies because the test is in the testimonies you're not gonna have a testimony without tests and tests not singular plural so it's important especially again you're a man right? So if this was a question presented in front of a woman, let's say she may have somewhat of similar answers, but because men were designed specifically to be the heads, not just households, but just out in the world, right? It's important to discuss the importance of mental health. And I love how you highlighted mental health comes from a spiritual background, it comes from a spiritual background. So at the end of the day, mental health and the spiritual health, they they go hand in hand, you know? So it's important to understand that as you highlighted, you know, you're not supposed to have everything together. You're supposed to understand that everything is, you know, how it's supposed to be. So we really appreciate you taking the time to, um, share all of what you shared. Um, that is so necessary, especially in today's time to speak as a man, 
um, talk about the importance of mental health, the importance of challenges. Challenges also pave a way in your purpose too. Like it's a part of your fulfillment. Like a lot of times we don't understand or appreciate goodness until we uh, we go through hardship. We go through something that gets to the point where it might, you know, kill us or break us or destroy us. But by the favor and the hand of the most high God, you know, that's not something that by his grace that we experience. So thank you for sharing all of what you have today. This has been um, a wonderful time Absolutely. speaking with you and just learning about, you know, your calling, your story and how amazing it is. And most importantly, just how important it is to share the things that you have going on, not just in your personal life, but understanding that, you know, when you work directly with men and women, but men that are going through challenges where they may feel like they don't have a purpose or tomorrow, or, you know, they, they don't matter to the world. They don't matter to, you know, the people that seem to look down on them. No, this is important. You know, like you said, and like the word of God says, like, there's power in the tongue. There's power in what we think. There's power in specifically what we say because God, he spoke and he spoke everything into existence, right? So it's not just that he thought about it. It's right. the power of when he spoke it, you know? Yes. There's uh, yeah. Psalm 33 that says, and he spoke and it commanded, right? It stood fast. So the moment that when God said, let there be light, there was light. You didn't hear, you know, seven days later or years later. No, the moment that God spoke it into existence, it it existed. So because we're made in his likeliness and image, we have to understand that the challenges, that's where that faith comes from. Um, there's another very, very, very important scripture that comes up to mind because it, it actually relates to all of what you said today. It's in Psalm 11, verse three. And it basically says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And that's such a powerful scripture because it relates back to mental health, right? So the foundations come from, of course, your family, your bloodline, your mindset, um, yes. uh, how you respond back to anything that's designed to destroy you because obviously god did not design things to destroy you but the enemy has his plans as you said which is absolutely true so as jesus said i come that you have life more um abundantly right abundantly. Mm -hmm. so you know obviously god is you know he has high standards so us as his children we have to understand we should have high standards too and not just in cars houses property but in your mindset in your well-being in the health of what comes for you so this has just been an amazing time speaking with you i have one last question before we close out our wonderful segment today so of course here on the lady e effect we talk about media. We talk about, most importantly, personal development, our testimony <clears throat> to uh, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and of course, business success, business optimization. But as we've been talking about today, purpose, right? So if you had a statement that you would like to leave with the audience in regards to purpose, what would that be? Uh, I think I have two statements. Um when you take care of when you take care of God's people, God will take care of you. Number one, and when you do your best, God will do the rest. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I know a lot of people right now want to get into housing, and I'm happy to come back in another segment to kind of talk about a little bit more uh, strategy, uh, how we actually did it in the step by step process. I can even give you my story, which I'm happy to share. Um, but I, I feel like in a lot of things, you know, we don't really see our benefit. Like I, I, hear, I always hear people all the time that say stuff like, well, how do I benefit? And I'm like, you're benefiting because you're making the connection. You're benefiting because somebody else is, 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 is you're planting seeds into that person or into that business or into that partnership in order for you to reap. That's, that's the purpose. That's when you think about it from that context, because when I when I go into partnerships, the first thing I always ask is I already got my mission in mind, but I still ask them how I can serve them. You know, that's my goal. I'm like, you know, what do you need? And people think like, oh, wow, like you actually thinking about my needs first before your own. Mm. 
Well, yeah, of course, because my goal is for us to build together. So if I can support what you're trying to pursue, then obviously I'm going to be able to, you know, uh, get my get the things that I need to get done. So when we're coming from that perspective, first and foremost, especially in partnerships, any type of collaboration, networking, that tends to build a rapport to where that builds trust. And then trust leads to actual true um, relationship. And I think that's what it's about. Mm. That is so powerful. And I love that when you take care of God's people, God will take care of you. When you do your best, God will do the rest. Amen. Oh, this was so lovely. Thank you so much for coming on our platform and just blessing the audience with your story, your life, wisdom, knowledge, and your expertise. This has been a wonderful opportunity speaking with you and just learning more about you. And we just plead the blood of Jesus over your mother, your family, and we pray Thank that you. You. the grace of God uh, sees her through. You know, God is a powerful yes. God and, you know, words create worlds, as your sister says, and God bless her as well. You know, we just speak the word of God. We speak the healing and restoration over her life, as well as you and just everyone that you're being of service to in our audience as well. So we thank you so much for your time. Um, if anyone is looking to get in touch with you, how would they get in touch with you? Oh, well, so you can actually find me on Instagram at Remy Marcel. So that's R-E-M-Y Marcel, M-A-R-C-E-L underscore on Instagram. And then you can also uh, find me at Elex Solutions Consulting um, or just find me at Elex, Solu or Elex Housing Solutions uh, dot com or dot org, excuse me. And then you can actually find me on LinkedIn under Remy, Remy Jules, uh, R-E-M-Y-J-U-L-E-S. Um, and then you can also go to electhousingsolutions.org and find us. Um, and then as far as, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'm not Hollywood. You can find me on Facebook. Feel free to DM me, find out a little bit more about me, my community, my housing program, what I'm doing in Central Texas, how we can link up if there's opportunity for partnerships there and how we can connect. Amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Definitely looking forward to have you come back to a future episode. So for anyone that is looking to get in touch with Remy, please be sure to check out all of the information that he just provided. We will also provide the information in the description box, whether you watch this on YouTube or you listen to this on the audio a version of any of our podcast platforms. Um, this will all be available. As you can see, he's doing a lot of amazing work um, and he is open to connect with those that would like to partner with him. And yeah, so thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the Lady E Effect. Uh, this has been once again, an uh, awesome episode. We're very appreciative of those that have tuned in. And once again, please be subscribed sure to subscribe to our youtube channel like share leave some comments you know yes. if you have any questions you know please please leave questions for mr remy he is doing awesome and he's more than happy to be of assistance to you so if anybody has any questions for myself or any of our previous guests please be sure please be sure to leave comments and Yes. So until next time, thank you again for joining us and you all have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>